May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our Redeemer. Amen. Does God have feelings? This was a question raised as part of our preparation for a sermon series before the lockdown began. What do we do in church and why? Now this excellent question about whether God has feelings may appear to be nothing at all about what we do in church and why. But I believe it's a very relevant question because what we think of God in this way is how we do approach him in our prayers and worship. If indeed we can, and depending on our answer to this question, if we want to. Also to point out that this question was asked by someone who is under the age of 16. And given the age range of the young people in our congregation, being aged under 16 is to be very much under the age of 16. So our exploration should take account of this as any young person seeks God and wonders whether she or he wants to carry on doing that for themselves. But also, we are all given a chance to have a go at exploring this and to consider how God may come to any of us at any time, however we feel and how we respond to the things of the, of the eternal, of eternity. I'm sure I'm not going to give the whole picture or, or get to the bottom of where this question may take us, but let's take a step. So does God have feelings? I want to say without any complexity, yes. Because why would any, any of us seek a living relationship with anyone or any one who would be so distant and out of reach than one without feelings of some kind? How are we supposed to reach out, seek or begin a relationship when feelings of some kind don't come into it and God reaches out to us? And I would be on fairly good ground to say yes. In scripture, we are made in God's image and we have feelings, so therefore God must. Also, as God speaks through his prophets, we hear the language of heartbreak at the unfaithfulness of his people towards him. And if any of us has gone through heartbreak and disappointment, we know what this feels like. The people must have hurt God's feelings. Jesus, as God's son, and sons are like their fathers in the Jewish tradition, Jesus weeps at the loss of his friend Lazarus, cries in despair from the cross, and sweats blood in anxiety in Gethsemane. We also read in scripture that the Holy Spirit can be grieved. We can see then that feelings are very much around God. We may wonder what kind of feelings our young person had in mind when asking the question. Maybe we are talking about feelings which can be hurt. We wouldn't want to hurt anyone's feelings, let alone those of God. And hurt feelings can manifest in all kinds of way, can't they? Jealousy, loss of trust, revenge, anger, unforgiveness, and that hostile silence. Or feelings may have been so hurt that the hurt person dare not have any feelings now, and this makes them almost less than the human being God would want them to be. Or hurt feelings can in the end do us some good because our feelings perhaps have masked a truth which we need to admit and this can lead us though to thankfulness. Maybe God might hurt our feelings to get us to mature as people. Yet does God have these kind of feelings which lash out and hurt? or which mask an untruth. This doesn't sound like a true God of love at all. Are the feelings which our young person is asking about uh, those which only surface when excited or invited spontaneously, maybe even irrationally, here today and gone tomorrow? God is constant, we read in scripture, and yet there is some spontaneity about God. But is this God's feelings or how we often experience God's ways in order to get us to respond to him? Maybe the feelings in question are to do with an intuition. We feel something isn't right or we're not in the right place or we need to prepare or design something coming along the road. 
or we have to make a decision in spite of not having all the facts. I don't know if God needs to be intuitive the way we think about intuition. God has all the facts. And yet the mystery is that God often prompts us to move and we can experience this in our feelings. We can read about this in the books of the law and the prophets in the Old Testament. Or maybe our young person is talking about the feelings which are emotional, as we may have feelings for someone, feelings of love, compassion, or even dread, dislike, or based on a memory we had of them and thinking about the that evokes these feelings. God knows what we're like and, and what we have been through. God having feelings about that, though, sounds irrelevant. And yet God addresses what we've been through, wanting us to be reconciled to people and to know joy again. The Psalms are full of this. Might God have a personality type where God's self is ruled more by heart than head? And those of us who are ruled more by head than heart could be judged as missing the mark of what it means to be spiritual or holy. We imagine that God would be far more balanced because we often find ourselves in partnership with one different than ourselves in this respect, for our good. Or perhaps God is like Spock from Star Trek, uh, beyond time, space and from another planet, completely logical, with no feeling at all, and yet somehow finding himself on the good ethical moral side of life. Those of us who can remember Spock may have had a soft spot for someone so in control when the rest of the earthlings were panicking as monsters appeared on their starship Enterprise. In such times, we all might want a Spock to come and save us from ourselves. And yet God often seems to call us all to help each other, not to seek an individual, unfeeling, always so logical and rational star. We may wonder where feelings come from, what they mean, but whether we are talking the language of the heart or of the brain, feelings are a huge part of the human condition. And in order for anyone to be in a relationship with another, feelings are going to come into it. One thing we can sensibly and reasonably say is that a maker understands what he or she has made, and from what, and maybe even why. And since God is our maker, he fully understands our human condition and loves us for it. Salvation history, as recorded in our Bibles, has God reaching out in love for humankind, again and again, drawing us back into his orbit, picking us up, dusting us off, and setting us back on our feet. But does this mean God has feelings like this himself? God is bigger than our human condition, so perhaps not quite. But God is often experienced in the Christian faith as the Holy Trinity. So, as our maker, God is not human with our human frailties. Whatever we feel at any time, there is a greater and deeper reality wherein God dwells that we can only wonder at. And this is good, because for God to be God and the one we look to for refuge and help, we need one stronger, wiser, who is many steps ahead of our human feelings and would cheer us on to face life in all its ups and downs. God may be God, and yet, as our Redeemer, in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, there is nothing to say that God can't or wouldn't come down to us. How else are we to reach God unless God does? God then comes alongside us with compassion, love, forgiveness, patience, all of which contain within themselves feelings. God came down at Christmas in the birth of a frail, human, poor baby Jesus and grew up surrounded by feelings and passions and everything it means to be a person we should see that empathy would be present. 
Jesus reached out to address much human suffering and need. As the Holy Spirit, when she comes into our lives, we and all our being, including our feelings, are caught up in fellowship with God and in joy and energy and courage, able to address our feelings of fear and pain and live a life of courage and abandonment to the one true God in love and service to him. So that's, does God have feelings? Um, we, we need to discuss this, I think. It's good to discuss these things. Um, and so I'm going to offer a couple of discussion questions for you to chew over. Um, and these are the questions. What is at stake if God doesn't have feelings? What is at stake if God doesn't have feelings? And therefore, how might worship, prayer and whatever we do in church change? So have a chew on this. What is at stake if God doesn't have feelings? And therefore, how might worship, prayer and whatever we do in church change? Thank you to the person who asked that question. It's been really good to think about it. And uh, if any of you want to ask me anything, please be in touch about that through the, through the website or email me um, or phone. So all the best and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Keeping safe.